What's up guys, Alex here and it's time for a Saturday tutorial and today we're going to look at this. So, I wanted to talk about specifically the trailer hits in this song because, um, yeah, this is a Final Fantasy remix I've been working on. Again, yeah, another Final Fantasy remix. And I posted a short clip about this track when I was working on it a few weeks ago on my Facebook um, personal profile. And a few friends of mine asked me, Why, Wow, Alex, how did you manage to make your trailer hits sound so big? What are you using? And uh, the thing... Uh, that uh, people need to understand if you, if they want to make uh, big trailer hits is that they need to understand layering and contrast because um, yeah that, that's the key to making your some elements in your in your song sound bigger and louder without having to crank the volume up too much and um, yeah trailer hits are, basic, are basically sounds like this one for example this was actually the first trailer hit I imported into this project and then I added like something like eight layers to it because while it sounds great like this, when you put it together with the rest of the orchestra, let's check out how it fades away into the mix so easily. Like, it was okay but kinda weak. But when you hear it alone, it's kind of great. But that is, that is because uh, when you play it along with the rest of the orchestra, the contrast between the loudness of the overall orchestra and the loudness of this sound is way too big. So this sound cannot stand out because it can't, like, it's not as loud and as um, uh, broad in the frequency range as the orchestra. So what I did to solve this problem, like the first thing someone would think is the right thing to do is to just increase the volume of the hit. So let's try that out. I'm going to increase the volume of the hit and play it along with the orchestra. While I can hear it a little bit more now, it's still not as good as I'd like it to be because volume is just a part of the equation. If you want an element to uh, stand out out of your mix, there are uh, a few ways to, to do that. And one way is to create space into the mix to um, like in terms of frequencies to make the elements stand out. But since trailer hits are supposed to take over almost all the frequency range, the right answer here is to um, layer this Falcon Punch hit with a lot of other sounds and hits that are more present in the rest of the frequency range than this sound is. So because this sound, other than being like, like, let's check out how it translates into the frequency range. You can see it has a lot of high frequency here and some low frequency here, but it fades away so easily also because the tail here, the, the decay of the transient is, is too uh, steep, you know? And uh, so this sound needs more low end and a more substantial tail. And uh, to solve that problem, I decided to layer it with this Tycho roll from Hybrid Tools 2, which has quite a few low frequencies, but most particularly a nice tail. So let's check it out. And since it, uh, this trailer, uh, sorry, this Tycho roll has different characteristics from our trailer hit, which is instead a sound that has a snappy attack, but almost no, no tail and no low frequencies at all, almost. When, you, when we put those together, they complement each other because they both like have something to offer to each other. So Falcon Punch has high frequencies uh, and uh, a nice snappy attack to offer to the Tycho Roll, while the Tycho Roll has a nice 
uh, tail to offer to the Falcon Punch that has none. So when played together, they sound like this. Almost as if it was a single sound and they do not compete for space in the mix because um, they both play in different frequency ranges like rather they are focused on different frequency ranges and they are different kind of sounds but this again is still not good enough i thought that it needed more low frequencies so i added this sound which is a very very low boom um trailer sound so let's check it out that alone is kind of meh it's kind of quiet you almost can't hear it but you, as you can see here in the frequency range, it plays at very, very low frequencies, which is something that the Taiko Roll and the Falcon Punch do not do. Like here it plays from 30 to 80 hertz specifically. So this is a great addition to our layer. Even if it's subtle, you can still hear its effect when we played those three together. So let's check them out. Like you hear it has even more uh, presence in the low end because this sound also has a pretty nice and long tail other than being so much focused on the low frequencies then to add even more an even more dramatic feel to it i decided to add this downer sound and downers are basically these kind of sounds here which you hear a lot in trailers and uh, they help unleash or rather they help release the tension but uh, in this example here I use this downer specifically because I like how it's made so let's check it out um, completely like you can hear it has a nice reverse sweep before it hits which is great which is something that uh, the Falcon Punch hit and the, the Taiko Roll and this hit here do not have this reverse sweep. So this adds another characteristic to the sound which makes it more rich. And then the downer after, um, like during, it has a nice attack and uh, it adds even more low frequencies. So when we layer all this stuff together, what ends up what we end up having is a sound that has the snap attack like the powerful snappy attack of the falcon punch hit and uh, a sound that has the the bold the atmospheric boldness and the tail of the tycho rolls then the low frequencies of this low boom and then the reverse sweep of the downer and some of the low frequencies that the downer has in the tail so together, these sounds cooperate, integrating something which is bigger than the sum of its parts and sounds almost like it's a single huge trailer hit. So let's check it out all together. Pretty awesome, right? Compared to this. It has even more characteristics, more frequencies and... The volume didn't increase as much, but you see the broadness of the frequencies increased. So now the sound stands out a little bit more. But then on top of that, I also added some cymbals. And cymbals are... So let's check them out. And yeah, cymbals here are not too... Like compared to the rest of the sounds, they are kind of quiet. But they play in the high frequency range which is um, like th these sounds here live quite some space space in the high frequencies and uh, most especially it's not only about the frequencies but the, the kind of uh, transient they have like the they have a um, very long attack and a very long decay and release so they add a, some um, sense of like some atmospheric sense to the whole thing and uh, that helps making this trailer hit sound more open. So let's check out the trailer hits, the downers, etc., along with the cymbals. You can hear the sound, like everything sound more open thanks to the cymbal. And uh, so yeah, that's the thinking beh behind this layering. Like every single layer has... Uh, 
something to offer to the overall sound. And um, yeah, below that I also added a filtered mega horn, this thing here, which again alone it's it's nothing special, but when you add it together to the rest, they form something which is greater than the sum of its parts. Because every single element has a special characteristics characteristic. So when we hear it together with the rest of the orchestra, you can hear it way more than uh, what you would hear if we only had that uh, Falcon Punch hit playing alone. So yeah, it's not only a question of how um, loud uh, an instrument or a sound is in terms of volume, but most specifically, it's a question of how broad its frequency range is. The broader it is, the easier it will be to hear it because um, every single speaker, uh, headphone or device people listen to music on has its own frequency response. So every single of these devices has its own way to interpret uh, an audio signal, which uh, basically makes it so that some frequencies in some devices are less hearable and other frequencies are more hearable. So layering also helps you into solving this problem because for example, here I layered the uh, trailer hits in such a way that it's completely broad. So regardless of which um, device you're using to listening to this track, you're, st you're still going to hear the trailer hit because it's so broad and it's present in so many frequencies that your device is going to, regardless of how it interp interprets the sound, is going to still um, reproduce a part of the frequencies of the trailer hit. So yeah, you have to keep that in mind with, um, I'd say, all the instrumentation of your track. If you follow this, you know, mindset of um, living space in the frequency range and uh, making, uh, you know, your sounds more broad in the whole frequency range, it's going to help you very much into building more consistent but also more clean orchestration and instrumentations and uh yeah you also you also have to keep in mind that the key behind layering is to put together sounds that are complementary between each other and do not fight for space in the mix so even here in the orchestra every single layer here has its own you know kind of space in the mix and its own focal point like it Every single instrument here focuses on a different part of the frequency range. So when you hear it together, like when you hear the whole orchestra together, the frequency range is even evenly distributed. Like, let's check out the like check out the frequency range here while the, the song plays. Like you see, it has an even shape, normal shape with no strange, you know, uh, peaks, you know? And that's the thing you want to achieve when you write orchestral music. Like you shouldn't have too many peaks, like a little peaks is normal, but when there are too many or when they are too steep and the shape of the overall, you know, um, frequency spectrum of your track is not even and it's weird, that's how you know your mix is kind of strange and maybe it needs work. But uh, it depends on the kind of genre of music you make, of course. For example, if you're, uh, yeah, if you're making orchestral music but you have electronic elements into it, then the frequency, the frequency range can look a little bit more funny, you know? But it's a good rule of thumb to follow um, the frequency range and to regulate your track in such a way that the frequency range looks even and it looks like it has a regular shape. But uh, yeah, this is just a roadmap to follow. It's not like you need now to do exactly this way for every single track you make and every single sound you import into your song. But uh, if you want to make your trailer hits sound huge like that, you should pick some trailer hits um, that are either 
already you know complete with a nice tail and a nice transient and nice attack and broad range of frequencies or you can pick many different layers anyway guys this will be it for the tutorial of the day and i hope you learned something new today and if you have some questions about what you just what i just explained or about the track or if i forgot to mention something ask away in the comments and i do my best to answer you and uh if you're new here you might want to, sub to subscribe if you want to learn to write orchestral and trailer music because i'm going to make a lot of tutorials on that and i made quite a few already so you might want to check the rest of the channel out and by the way guys if you're if you're interested in learning even more from me or in downloading like project files of my songs or have you know private lessons and private mentoring from my part you might want to check out my patreon page which is going to be linked in the description and uh yeah patreon is a way that you can support this channel and me into making even more of these tutorials videos for you guys and increase the quality and as you might have noticed if you've been following me following me the microphone quality today has increased Thanks to those who pledged on Patreon, because thanks to them, I was able to buy a good microphone to make these tutorials. So yeah, your Patreon support will directly impact the quality of the videos in this YouTube tutorial and might also help me into finding even more free time to spend into making tutorials for you guys. So if you're interested in that and want to support this channel, and also receive private mentoring and bonus rewards from me, check out my Patreon page. Anyway, that will be all for today, and uh, see you guys soon. I hope you have a nice day.